Hi, I'm David Soper, a technical marketing engineer from Cisco. Today I'll be going through the Cisco Intersight API and show a little bit about how to automate across your infrastructure. So I've been doing development for around 20 years now and previously doing some development work, uh, including some firmware development and software. Currently I'm focused on automation and programmability for Cisco Intersight and UCS, or the Unified Computing System. Uh, a few of the tools which I'll be walking through in a little bit more detail here are available out on DevNet. So these slides will be available after the presentation, but a couple of key resources are developer.cisco.com, where you can search for Intersight to learn a lot more about the Intersight API and get some hands-on experience with it. All of our Intersight documentation is also available out at intersight.com slash API docs. And finally, I'll walk through a little bit of use with other tools in SDK, such as Ansible, and galaxy.ansible.com has our Intersight modules and lots of hands-on examples and labs for using Ansible with Intersight. So to start, I'll take a look at the Intersight API and some of the developer tools available for learning to use the Intersight API. So one of the things that Intersight has done uh, is really an API first design. So you can take a look in your browser when you're on intersight.com at all of the interaction that the UI actually does with the API behind the scenes. So if you open your browser's developer console, you can see how the UI actually uses the API. Uh, a lot of traffic there. So one of the things we've done to hopefully simplify the experience is build in a lot of tooling at intersight.com slash API docs. That's where we've got all of the API documentation and a built-in REST client to kind of give some hands-on examples, browse the resource model, look at the schemas, all of those available out at the API docs page. One of the other things that the API docs page has is a way to use the API reference in our built-in REST client to look at the query language for Intersight. And this is where We've really built in a lot of capabilities in the Intersight API to manage at scale with a OData-based query language, which allows the user to really pre-process and get the right data back from the API and avoid a lot of post-processing of data, of data. So this is where you can filter for only specific items in the API. You can also select so that you only receive specific content back from the API and especially at the scale that Intersight manages at, this is a very powerful tool to allow you to get the right data back out from the API and not have to do a lot of that after the fact when you are using the API. So give a little quick demo of using the API here. So I'll jump out to intersight.com and this is the main UI where we've got our dashboard and we can do server management tasks from the API. And a lot of capabilities here in Intersight, uh, I'll just focus kind of on a couple of lifecycle management and profile-based um, management tasks here in this session. Um, at the server table view, I've got just a couple of servers here, but one of the operations we can do is go through and do a firmware upgrade. And as we walk through this process in the UI, several steps, in picking versions and doing other customization as we're gonna go through a firmware upgrade. We can also use the API to drive this. And all of the items that the UI is rendering again are back in the API. So one of these that I'll take a quick look at in the API browser is how the UI actually gets, uses the API to get information on supported and recommended firmware versions. And to do that from within Intersight, I can go out to the help pages from the UI and API documentation. And this is exactly what was in the slides, intersight.com slash API docs from within an Intersight account or any external access to intersight.com slash API docs will bring you out to our API overview I won't go through all of this in detail, but all the information on the API, what it's based on is an open API standard, the query syntax, 
which again is follows the OData standard, very powerful in using the API. And then that API reference, this is where we've got our built-in REST client. And if I go and look for firmware, I can get all the resources associated with firmware. And one of those is firmware distributables. And this is where in that firmware upgrade process, when the UI is out looking for firmware images to pull down to the endpoint for firmware update process, the API will go and get information from this API endpoint. And one of those items that I can do is go in and select version information and recommended build. And this is a quick example and a lot more that goes on behind the scenes in the UI. But if I go and run that query, this pulls me just down and this item there. So recommended build is actually what the UI is using. But this is where there's a lot more information typically coming back um, from the API around how to actually access this, what versions of hardware it's supported on, et cetera. But when I run the queries in the API, I can get back just the version and then whether or not that's a recommended build. Recommended build equals Y is where those little thumbs up come in the UI. So quick look at how the UI actually uses the API to get this information and then how you can also do this in automation to do things like a completely automated firmware update using Intersight. So next up, I'll go through a slightly different demo of actually using some automation tools to run through some common tasks in Intersight. And for this part, I will use Ansible to do the automation with Intersight. Our Intersight Ansible modules are hosted out in Galaxy. So galaxy.ansible.com is where all of the Cisco Ansible collections are hosted now. Ansible 2.10 and later will be using collections more heavily and gives us a way to maintain all of our Cisco modules, uh, including those for Intersight for Ansible. Ansible interacts with Cisco Intersight using the API just like the UI does and just like the API browser does at API Docs. We also are able to get collections and a lot of the example code from Ansible Galaxy. So kind of a high level overview of how those uh, different pieces interact to drive automation back into Cisco Intersight. The code that I'll walk through next is all available out in DevNet in Code Exchange. So if you go to developer.cisco.com slash code exchange, you can search for the Intersight examples and those will take you to this link here, which is really our Cisco DevNet GitHub repo, where we maintain the source code, examples, and some hands-on labs for the Intersight Ansible collection and our Intersight modules. So taking a look back at Intersight, one of the other tasks that we'll do in a common task for servers is profile-based management. So the couple of servers I have here, you can see in the middle column here, don't currently have a server profile assigned. That's really how we'll do the policy definition and how to do the logical definition of what we want for servers. And the API and tools like Ansible provide us a great way to do that at scale and to check the desired state against the existing state back in Intersight. And as mentioned in the slides just a second ago, galaxy.ansible.com is where we host all of these modules. So taking a look at that out in Ansible Galaxy, the Cisco Intersight collection is available in the Cisco namespace. It's also where we keep all of the Cisco modules for UCS, all of our networking, tooling, ACI, um, and a lot of other things out there. So be sure and check that out. The Intersight specific modules are here. Um, simple install for Ansible when you're using Ansible collections. So this is one you don't have to navigate to GitHub to get the code and use it. And you can just run Ansible Galaxy to actually install and begin using this collection. And when you download that collection, one of the things you'll get is an example playbooks directory. And this has a range of 
playbooks for Ansible to do things like deploy server profiles, set up our inner site boot order uh, as a policy, and also do server profile actions. We'll take a quick look at that boot order policy example here. And in Ansible, what we are doing in this collection, we're using our inner site boot order policy module. We provide some API key information and um, out in developer.cisco.com for inner site, a lot more information on how to interact with the inner site API and use things like API keys to access the API for integrations like Ansible. Once we've got that API interaction um, sorted out in Ansible, the rest of this really looks like it would when you're using the UI for configuring a boot policy. So we've got a name of a boot policy. We've got a couple different boot devices with a local disk and virtual media. And what Ansible allows us to do is actually push that right into Intersight and check if we've got any changes against this desired state and what is actually in Intersight right now. So I'll now run this playbook where we take um, our DevNet accounts that we're using in Intersight, that's our inventory file, and we'll put that boot order policy in effect within Intersight. Uh, in this case, I've already got that defined, so there was no change, but this is where Ansible provides that configuration management, will tell me if that policy has a change from my desired state, and then would put it into place. And next up, we will go through a server profile that uses that boot order and a few other policies to actually do the logical definition of a server. So another example we've got out in the Ansible collection is our inner site server profile. And for this file, again, API key information to use it, at least for the scrolling there. And then we will use our inner site server profile module to go in and create this profile. This is where I've actually got a lot of variables coming in from Ansible to customize what I do for different server types or different environments. But what I end up with are assigned server definitions, that boot order policy, which I defined in the other playbook, IMC access, LAN connectivity, et cetera. Many things needed in the definition of a server all driven from Ansible. So we'll run through this one now. As we configure these profiles, actually scroll a little here. We do get a change indicated, and I'll actually just pop back over in the browser and get a refresh look at the page here. And we've got server profiles now defined for these servers. And these profiles, again, define that logical configuration of the server. We're using our disk and vMedia boot policy and other things set up from the profile. We also see that we've got non-deployed changes. So again, in Ansible, we can actually go in and run playbooks to deploy those profiles. Those are all examples that are out there in that Ansible Galaxy collection and available on Code Exchange. So to wrap up here, again, those examples are featured out in the developer.cisco.com slash code exchange pages for Intersight. Also many other examples of doing automation Again, Hyperflex, UCS servers of all types using Intersight, and examples of other SDKs and integrations that are available for Cisco Intersight, and lots of hands-on labs and additional information out in DevNet. Thank you for your time. Feel free to reach out with questions. There's also developer forums in DevNet and a lot of other resources to get started with Intersight and any of the other automation available. Thank you.